All right, 2, 5, we're going to find the zeros of polynomial functions. So strap yourself in. There's a lot to cover on 2, 5. So we know this already. This is a review. The fundamental theorem of algebra says that if we have a polynomial of degree n, then we'll have at least one zero in the complex number. And so we also know we have like this, 5x squared plus 2x. We're going to have at least, I'm sorry, at most two zeros that are real. Okay, so that was the important part before. But now from last chapter we know about all our imaginary numbers. Now we get to say that because of the linear factorization theorem that we're going to have exactly and zeros. Some of them are going to be real, some of them are going to be imaginary, but they're going to add up to exactly the degree, however many our biggest exponent is. So if we have 5x to the fourth plus a whole bunch of stuff, we're going to have four zeros. Okay? Some might be real, some might be imaginary, but we'll be able to get four exactly. All right, so if we take a look at our first example here, just a couple of examples. The first degree polynomial x minus 2 has 1, 0, and we know it's 2, right? We can plug, set this equal to 0. The second one, we could factor x squared into x minus 3, x minus 3. Again, it's going to have exactly two zeros, and we know it's 3 and 3, or 3 with a multiplicity of 2. We've done that. How about x cubed? We need three zeros here. So if we factor out an x, we get x and then x squared minus 4. And then to finish this, if we said x squared, so we know that from this one, x equals 0. From the parentheses, x squared plus 4 equals 0. We would get x squared equals negative 4. When we do the square root of that, we get plus or minus the square root of negative 4, or plus or minus 2i, right? We would have root 4i plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2, and we have an i hanging on there. All right, and then we got this fourth degree one here. Let's check this out. If we were to factor this, this is a perfect square, minus 1. So we could split this up into x squared plus 1 and x squared minus 1. And then we could factor the second parentheses again into x plus 1 and x minus 1, since it's the difference of perfect squares. So there's two real zeros, 1 and negative 1. Got those. But then we've also got this parentheses here, x squared plus 1. We're going to do the same thing we did up here. x squared plus 1 equals 0. x squared equals negative 1. So x is going to be plus or minus i is what we would get. All right, so we're starting to introduce imaginary zeros into our factoring. So this one, number 9, this is a quick one. See if you can figure out all our zeros here. No imaginaries here just regular old real numbers. All right, so let's introduce the rational zero test. So the rational zero test tells us what our possible zeros could be. Okay, not what they are going to be, but what the possible ones are. And this is the key. The factors of the constant term, which is our last term, which we call p. p is all the factors of our last number, divided by the factors of the leading coefficient, which is up here, the a sub n. Okay, that we're going to call q, and that's all the factors of the leading coefficient. So last over first, we'll take a look at this one. Our last number is 1. Our first number is 1. And so our possible factors, not the actual ones, but all the ones that we can check, the possible rational, that's important, because there can be irrational ones, like square root of 5 is irrational, because it's two point, and then the numbers go on and on and on. A rational number, just as a reminder, rational means it's either going to stop, 5.5, or we can put it in a fraction, 25 over 2, something like that. All right? Or, sorry, last one, 2.66, if it repeats forever, that's also rational. If it repeat, if the decimal part over here repeats, and it, or it doesn't repeat, it goes on forever with different numbers, non-repeating, it's going to be irrational. 
But on this list, we're going to do our possible rational numbers. So we're going to take all the factors of p. The only factors of 1 are 1 and negative 1 over all the factors of q. Well, again, that's just 1, so that's plus or minus 1 on the bottom. So the only possible rational factors of this are going to be plus or minus 1. So pretty easy one to begin with. We're going to get a lot more complicated moving through. All right, so on this one, you're going to have negative 2. Don't really care about the negative because we're going to put a plus minus on it anyway. All the factors of this divided by all the factors of 1. All right, try those and see if these zeros, 1, negative 1, and negative 2, match up with what shows up on your list. All right, find the rational zeros of this long fourth degree polynomial. So we're going to dive right in and use our graphing calculator on all the problems like this. All right, so grab the graphing calculator and plug this in. x to the fourth. You're going to get really comfortable with your graphing calculator in this chapter. Lots of graphs. Don't have to sketch them necessarily, but we've got to look at them. Plus x squared minus 3x minus Six. Thank you for those notices. All right, and so on here, if we're going to graph them, I'm not going to graph it yet because I want to know what my possible rational zeros are. So on here, what's my possible? So six, what are possible factors here? One and six or two and three? So that's going to go on top, plus or minus. One, two, three, and six all over. My coefficient in front is just 1, so plus or minus 1. And so those are all my possible rational factors. 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, 3 divided by 1, and 6 divided by 1. So right away, I know my window range for my graph between those numbers. So let's go to our window. So negative 10 to 10. We'll definitely get all these numbers in there. And let's just reset this to negative 10 to 10 might have to change our y's. We're not sure about that yet. See what happens. Okay, we cross in two places here. And if I look in on this graph, it looks to me like we're crossing right on 2. Okay, right on 2 we're hitting right there. And 2 is one of my possible factors. Right, so I think it's 2. I'm going to go ahead and verify this really quickly. So, to verify, I can use synthetic division. 2 on the outside. My factors are 1, negative 1, 1, negative 3, and negative 6. Really quickly, we'll run through this one. And it is indeed a factor. So I know that x minus 2 is one of my factors. Let's go back to the graph and see about the other one right here. I'm just going to hit trace real quick and move over. See what we've got here. That looks like it's about negative 1. It's not landing on it exactly, but best guess would be about negative 1, which negative 1 is on my list as well. So let's try negative 1 with some synthetic. Let's put it over here. So negative 1, and I'll go with what's left over. 1, 1, 3, and 3. So 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 3, negative 3. Hey, look at that. It does come out, so negative 1 is another zero. All right, and so we found all of our rational zeros. We could keep going if it said find all of your zeros. I also know the next part is x squared plus 3. So from here, I know my zero is 2. My zero here is negative 1. And from here, I could say x squared plus 3 equals 0. x squared equals negative 3. x equals plus or minus i root 3. All right, those are imaginary numbers right there, but that is two more zeros, and I should have four total, right? So we've got two rational right here and right here, and two imaginary. All right, so see if you can do the same thing here, just finding all the rational ones for your checkpoint, number 19. 
All right, use the rational zero test to find all of our rational zeros for this. All right, so here's our steps. Again, we're going to go to our graphing calculator and take a peek at what the graph looks like. 2, oops, let me clear it. 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x plus 3. And what are my possible zeros here? On top, factors of 3 are just 1 and 3. On the bottom, my factors of 2 are just 1 and 2. So all my possible factors are 1, 1 half, 3, 3 halves, and let me rewrite that in order, plus or minus 0.5, 1, 1 and a half, and 3. Those are my four possible rational zeros. So I've got this written out, and let's do a nice zoom here. We know that it's going to be between these two, so I'm still okay with negative 10 to 10. Hit graph. Let's see where it hits. Okay, definitely over here. Let's use our trace. So it looks like negative 3 is pretty close, and that's on our list there. So we'll do some synthetic. Negative 3, 2, 3, negative 8, and 3. does indeed come in clean, so we've got x plus 3. And at this point, we could do 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And is there any way to get this factored out? We would have to have 2x and 1, and we would have to have x and 1, and they would have to both be negatives. And so does that work? That's going to be negative 2. That's going to be negative 1. Yes, it does. So we can get all of our rational zeros. x plus 3. 2x minus 1. x minus 1. So we've got negative 3. Is it on our list? Yes, it is. We've got positive 1 half. Is that on our list? Yes, it is. And we've got positive 1. Is that on our list? Yes, it is. So all of these check out. Those are all of our rational zeros for this third degree polynomial. Your turn. Same exact steps here. Graph it first. Guess what one, or I'm sorry, set up all your possible rationals. See which one looks like it shows up on the graph. Go to your synthetic. All right. We're doing the exact same thing on this one, number five, but it's just getting a little more complicated because we're going to start having imaginary solutions and we need to find everything. So we're going to need three solutions total on this one. Back to the graphing calculator. Clear it out. Negative 10 x cubed plus 15 x squared plus 16 x minus 12 and my possibles are factors of 12. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4 are all my factors of 12. Factors of 10, uh, 1 and 10, 2 and 5 are all my factors. All right, so we've got a whole bunch of possible solutions here. It looks like the biggest one is 12 divided by 1. So let me go to the window and punch this out a little bit so we get the 12 included, right? 12 divided by 1 is the biggest thing we have here. Go ahead and graph it. Oh, it crosses in here. So I'm going to make it a little easier and do a box zoom just so I can zoom in on all the places it crosses. And there. All right, so it looks like this one is the only one where it crosses right on a tick mark, so I'm going to look at that one first. Looks like it might be about 2. There it comes. Yeah, 1.99, so I'm going to guess 2 is 2 possibility. 2 divided by 1 or 4 divided by 2, definitely a possibility. So let's use positive 2. We go to our synthetic. Negative 10. 15, 16, and negative 12. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, but 
six, but that's twelve. That does come out cleanly on this one. So now we have x minus two as one factor. And now we've got negative ten x squared minus five x plus six on this one. Let's go back here and see if any others look like they're gonna come out clean. Move over back to here. Here we come. 0.55, something like that. And so that, we've got three halves, we've got four fifths. 0.55, I don't think that's anywhere on our list here. So seeing as, since I'm not seeing anything that's a possibility, but I do have a quadratic, I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula to finish this up. So negative, negative 5, plus or minus, 5 squared is 25, minus 4, A, C, all over 2 times negative 10. We'll clean this up. We've got 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus, no, plus 240, all over negative 20. 25 plus 240 is 5 plus or minus the root of 265 all over negative 20. And at this point, I would probably leave it right here. We could clean up 5 over 20, but not the coefficient in front of the 265. All right? We can play with it and see if anything comes out but that's not going to be a rational number. The square root of 265 doesn't come out clean, but we do have two more solutions. Right? This is two answers, a plus and a minus, and we had two as well. So our final answers are going to be this answer and two. That's all of our zeros, for example, five. All right, let me just check the book real quick to make sure that I haven't led you astray, because that's a lot of chances to make mistakes. Nope, that's exactly what it has. The only thing the book says that I didn't is it turned this, it put this into a calculator and got some decimals, and those are negative 1.06 with a whole bunch of numbers past that, and 0 0.56, which if we remember when we were doing our trace on the calculator, it was like between 0.58 and 0.52 where it crossed in here, so 0.56 seems to make sense. Okay, so we have all three of our answers, and let's go ahead and jump in there on 31. Okay, so try your best on 31. All right, so example six, we're going to have some help here sometimes if we have some conjugates. Because anytime you have a complex conjugate where you have an imaginary part, if you have an imaginary part, you have a plus and a minus. All right. So if I have an x minus i, I've got an x plus i hanging out there somewhere also. So find a fourth degree polynomial function with real coefficients that has negative 1, negative 1, and 3i as zeros. We know we've got x plus 1 because of this. We know we have x plus 1. Because of this, we know we have x minus 3i because of this. And anytime I have an i, I also have the opposite i. So since I had minus 3i, I know I'm going to have plus 3i. And so there we go. And we need to figure out the whole polynomial. So we need to do some big time foiling. So here we go. This is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's a shortcut. We can come straight to that. This one, we can do our shortcut also. This is going to be x squared minus 3i times 3i. It's going to be negative 9i squared, which is plus 9. And so let's go from there. I'm going to multiply all three of these times x squared. So I'll get x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x squared. And then all of them times 9. So then we'll have plus 9x squared. And just lining up plus 18x plus 9. And so our final answer here is x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 10x squared plus 18x plus 9 as our final answer. Okay? 
So you could pull that all the way out there. What you really need to be able to do is get rid of all the eyes. Okay. So at this step, we've gotten rid of the eyes. So an OK answer is this: x plus one uh, squared, because it's twice, and then x squared plus nine. That would be perfectly fine as well. You don't have to foil it all the way out, but you can. And so I did that for you, so you can see it. Okay. But I would probably leave it as x plus one squared x squared plus 9. All right, so same thing here on 45. Find a polynomial with the real coefficient that has the given zeros, 1 comma 5i. All right, and just as a hint, let's do, this is a degree of 3. It doesn't tell you, but I'm going to just say, let's do degree of 3 on 45. All right, so now factoring this thing, we're going to get into something like this, where we're going to try to break this down, and we know that 1 plus 3i is a 0. Okay, So knowing that 1 plus 3i is a 0, we know that we have this x minus 1 plus 3i. And if we have that, we must also have x plus 1 plus 3i. Remember, we have a minus and a plus anytime we see the i's. So what we're going to need to do here is foil this thing all the way out. This is x minus 1 minus 3i times x plus 1 plus 3i. And so I'm going to go ahead and use the box method to multiply this all the way out. If you haven't seen the box method before, all I did was take this guy and move it down here and then make a grid that matches them all up. So I know I multiply everything by everything else. 3ix, this is going to be x, this is going to be negative 1, and then we'll have negative 3i, 3ix, and then we've got negative 3i, and then we've got negative 9i squared. And so cleaning that up, a lot of stuff cancels. These guys cancel. Uh, these guys cancel. So we've got x squared. Did it, did it, uh, should I have missed something? I think I did because everything should cancel. I pause for a second and find where I missed one. All right, found the mistake up here, and I was just being foolish with our conjugate. This is always a minus. It's the conjugate that should be 1 plus, and 1 is a minus. All right? The conjugates are 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i. So when we distribute this, this in here is going to be a minus 1 so let's change that. This should be a minus. And so this becomes a minus x. This becomes a plus 1. And this becomes a positive. So these do not cancel, but these do. And that's what I was looking for, because if you do this right, all of your i's should cancel. Okay. So on this one, to clean this up, I've got x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 9i squared is the same as saying plus 9. So we've got x squared minus 2x plus 10. All right, and so we know that that's a factor of this huge thing up here. Oops, up here. How are we going to find the rest of the factors? Well, we know how to divide. We just haven't used it for a while. The non-synthetic division, we can just use our regular long division to break this thing down. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. x squared minus 2x plus 10 on the outside. And x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 60 on the inside. And we're going to start from there. x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. cubed plus 10x squared, and we'll keep track of our negative.
negatives going down. So this will become 1x cubed, and this will be minus 4x squared plus 2x. And we'll start over again. x cubed divided by x squared is plus x. places to go wrong with our negatives. So this will be negative x cubed, this will be plus 2x squared, and this will be minus 10x, and so this will end up being negative 6x squared, and this will end up being 12x, and this will be minus 60, and so our last step, negative 6x squared divided by x squared will be minus 6, and let's cross our fingers so this comes out clean. Negative 6x times x squared is negative 6x squared. Good there. Negative 6 times negative 2x is positive 12x. Good there. And times 10 is negative 60. Thank goodness we don't have a remainder because we're not supposed to. We've got x squared minus 2x plus 10. x squared minus x minus 6. Can we factor this last piece? Absolutely. This is going to be minus 3 and plus 2. Alright, so there we go. We got our zeros. We have zeros of 3, negative 2, 1 plus 3i from the beginning, 1 minus 3i. Alright, okay, so there are a few more examples in this chapter. I'm going to stop you right there. We're only going to do the first seven. Okay, we may have a chance to talk about the others, but that's it for now. So just do the first seven. And any questions, which I'm sure we'll have plenty, make sure they bring, you bring them up in class.